All right, let's talk about exponent rules. So the most basic exponent rule we have is what's called the additive law of exponents. It's this one. Here's an example of it. Two to the third times two to the fourth is equal to two to the seventh because this is really two times two times two. This is really two times two times two times two. And when I have how many twos multiplied together? Oh, I have seven of them. So I have two to the seventh. But that's really just two to the three plus four. So you multiply two things with the same base together, you can add the exponents together. Similarly, when you divide them, you subtract the exponents. For example, if you add two to the fifth divided by two squared, that's really two times two times two times two times two. Times two. Oops, two times two. Two divided by three cancels. Two divided by three cancels. You get two times two times two, which is two to the third. It's really just two to the five minus three. So multiplying, you add. Divide, you subtract. And then you have this one. When you have a power to a power, you multiply the power. So two to the third to the fourth is two to the third times two to the third times three to the third times three to the third, which is just two times two times two. And then we'll kind of summarize these more generally in a minute. Um, there's also negative powers. So if you have, say, 2 to the negative third, that's really just 1 over 2 to the third. Why is that the case? Well, well I stated you something else first. Um, because 2 to the third times 2 to the negative third, well, when you add those powers, you get 2 to the 0. Well, what's 2 to the 0? Let's go over here for a second. 2 to the 0 is, well, what's 2 to the 0 times 2 to the 5th? I don't know exactly, but I know the additive law of exponents. I know that if I add 0 and 5, I should get 2 because it's 0 plus 5. But 0 plus 5 is just 5. So 2 to the 0 times 2 to the 5th is equal to 2 to the 5th. So this thing times 2 to the 5th is equal to 2 to the 5th. That has to be 1. 1 times something is the only thing that makes it stay the same. I really hate my face. Oh, I should put that on my video this time because, yep. Sorry, my face was like halfway on the screen. Um, so, 2 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 0 is 1. 18 million to the 0 is 1. Any number to the 0 power is 1. Um, although, be careful. Someone might say negative 3 to the 0 is 1, but negative 3 to the 0, you do the power first, and then the negative after, and that's negative 1. Okay, back here, 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the negative 3rd is equal to 2 to the 0, but that's just 1. And the reason it's a 0 is because these powers add together to give you 0. But then, if I isolate this, well, I can divide by that and say 2 to the negative 3rd is equal to 1 over 2. And then finally, fractional powers. So you might know 25 to the 1 half better as the square root of 25, which is 5. But the reason it works that way is because 25 to the 1 half power times 25 to the 1 half power is equal to 25 to the, well, 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So what's a positive number that we multiply it by itself? Is giving me 25. Well, the number has to be 5. Not negative. Whenever you take a fractional power with a positive number, you always get positive results. Any, no, any positive number to any power is always going to be positive. It's nice. Negative numbers to power is kind of weird. Um, so 5 times 5 is 25. So 25 to the 1 half is definitely 5. In a similar way, um, 8 to the 1 third power, well, we have an 8 to the 1 third times 8 to the 1 third times 8 to the 1 third is 8 to the 1. But then what number multiplied by itself? 1, 2, 3 times is equal to 8. Well, it's got to be 2. So 8 
over one third equals two. And eight to the two thirds equals eight over one third squared, which is two squared, which is four. How are we doing on time? Five minutes, we can go a little bit longer, sure. So, to summarize these rules more generally, the exponent rules are for any base b that is positive but not equal to 1, or n not equal to 1. We don't want 1 just to 1 weird, like 1 to any power is just 1. We have b to the x times b to the y equals b to the x plus y. That's the additive law of exponents. We have b to the x divided by b to the y equals b to the x minus y. You could also think of this as b to the x times b to the negative y, and then just add the powers. We have, what else do we have? Sorry, I erased some things. We have b to the x to the y, and then the power to the power, we just multiply the powers like that. We said b to the negative x is equal to 1 over b to the x. Um, b to the 0 is equal to 1. B to the 1 over P, let's call it, is the Pth root of X, of B, sorry. Wow, geez, it said, sorry, Pth root of B. It's like B to the 1 half power is the square root of B, B to the 1 third power is the cube of B, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, if you're raising B to like the Q over P power, like we did before, like, on the previous side, 8 to the 2 thirds power. You can either do it as b to the 1 over p to the q, which is then the pth root of b to the q, or you can do it as b to the q to the 1 over p, which is then the pth root of b to the q. Usually this first way is better, it's a lot easier to figure out what 8 to the 2 thirds is by doing 8 to the 1 third squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4, versus 8 to the 2 thirds is equal to 8 squared to the 1 third, which isn't impossible. That's what 64 to the 1 third, and the cube root of 64 is 4. But it is harder that way. You should try on your own doing. 27 to the 2 thirds power. If you do it this first way, it's really, really easy to get 9. If you do it the second way, it can be a lot harder. Um, I think that pretty much sums up the rules of exponents. These are not exponential functions. I mean, they have the same kind of work as exponential functions, but I'll talk about exponential functions in a different video. All right. stop the video.